What's happening, everybody? It's been a while. It's been a while, but we're back. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. Today's subject is uh, buying vehicles under the business name. And I know we've touched on this subject before, uh, but the only reason I want to revisit this subject is because uh, from the time that we've talked about that till now, there's been so many changes, okay? There have been many, many changes on this subject. That's why I wanted to revisit this subject with you guys, uh, just to put you up to date as to the requirements, what are the things that have changed, uh, what are the underwriters looking for now, and how the business credit industry has uh, changed from the time that we started uh, speaking on this subject in 2020, 2019, I believe. Not pretty sure, but uh, <laughs> I remember my uh, first video uh, talking about business credit and how we started doing this. One of the ideas that we found at this channel was to not only document our journey, uh, getting business credit, building business credit, but also we wanted to bring you guys along and so you can learn to do the same. And gosh, did we make mistakes, <laughs> plenty of mistakes. So, okay, let's just dive into the video right away. Um, there have been many changes, okay, uh, with buying a car or any vehicle under their business name, okay? so. One thing that I want to bring up is the fact that there are certain cars that you're unable to purchase under your business because those cars, and I've tried this, because these cars, uh, they would not be considered like a corporation car. And I'll give you an example. Like if you try to buy a, a Porsche, right? If you try to buy a Porsche, uh, I don't think you're going to be approved for that car. It's not considered kind of like a corporation car. Now, you know, if you have a four passenger, five passenger car or three row, uh, row seats, cars, one of those, you know, big Cadillacs, <laughs> um, those may be considered, but then again, I mean, those cars are close to six figures. So those are pretty harsh. Uh, to get approved for as well. Okay guys, just wanna take a minute here to remind you of all the resources that we post in the description down below. Resources that will help you get funding, resources that will get you, uh, uh, help you get approved for gas cards, resources that will get you approved for eCredible, which is a, a supplement company that I use when I want to boost my Equifax, my Experian, and uh, my Dun & Bradstreet. So use Incredible for that. If you ha if you happen to have like some accounts that don't report to the business, business credit bureaus, uh, sign up for Incredible and you can uh, have those accounts report to Dun & Bradstreet, Experian, Equifax. Okay, so click down below. There is a bunch of links that I post there. Please make sure you go through them and uh, let me know what you think, okay? Let's go back to the video. But uh, going back to the subject, so one of the things that have changed right now is that some of the underwriters are asking for a personal guarantee. So if you guys remember in some of the videos back then, I've posted some of the cars that I've uh, acquired under the business name and that included uh, three Nissan Rogues that we had sold under the business name. And for those three, we were approved um, at one, like the day that we went for those cars, where we were approved for those cars, the same day. I believe that one of the reasons that we also got uh, those loans is because the cars were not too expensive. I think they were, a little over thirty thousand uh, dollars each car, and then it was an excellent. Um, the the interest rate was not too bad either. So back then, it wasn't too hard to be approved for these cars. Um, but I think from that time to now, there have been a lot of business owners that have defaulted on those loans, and I think Ally 
and some of the underwriters that were very business uh, friendly have gotten a little more tighter with approving these loans. Um, so I've heard a lot of people in, in our Facebook group saying how for these loans, um, they are no longer doing the uh, business loans or the auto loans under the business alone. So I wouldn't say that still uh, that's not the case. I think you still can work it out. I think that if you submit an application with Ally and all your dogs are in a row, your business information checks out across the board, I don't think you will experience any problems with being approved. There is another financial institution that is business friendly and this institution I think is owned by Vroom. <laughs> now let me make a, a, a parenthesis here. I do not recommend you guys to go through Vroom, okay? And you know guys that I only recommend the things that I've done, things that I've put my hands on, uh, processes that I have gone through in terms of business credit, and Vroom is not one of them. <laughs> it's not one of them. Because I tried twice uh, with getting a vehicle via Vroom, both times we were approved, to then find out that they canceled the application for reasons that I do not understand. We called Ally because Vroom told us, they even gave us the interest rate and everything, the, um, the loan amount that we were approved for, and they said it was uh, from Ally. Now, the first time we did that with Vroom, we called Ally just to figure out what's going on, and Ally uh, told us that they had no approval for us in the records. So, not sure what's going on there. Um, I gave Ally or Vroom the benefit of the doubt and I thought that what Ally was doing that they were not able, they were not able to disclose any information, but then I, I was thinking to myself, why wouldn't they if I am the owner of the company uh, that was approved for the loan? So I never uh, understood the reasons as to why Vroom will say that we were approved and then they'll come back and say, oh, sorry, we have to cancel the application. <laughs> um, and then we did a second time, the same thing happened. And this time we were approved uh, uh, via another financial institution that they own. Okay, I'm not sure if they uh, purchased that financial institution lately, but when I applied the first time, uh, it wasn't through that financial institution. I don't want to say the name because I don't want to give too many details, but this is true. I have proved that we went through that process. And, and this time around, I called the financial institution directly and indeed they confirmed that we were approved for the vehicle, but uh, the terms were not beneficial to us and uh, therefore we had to uh, decline on the approval because they were not good terms uh, for us. Now, I say all this to say when you are trying to purchase a vehicle under their, your business name, you have to make sure, like I've told you always, uh, make sure that all of your information is uh, uh, it's, it's good, uh, it checks out across the board, and also make sure that the interest rates are, are, are is something that you want willing to take on. Uh, don't, don't take anything crazy like 20%, 29% or you know, 17%. Don't take any of that because that's, that's ludicrous. So try to get a, a interest rate that is at least under 10% or at 10%, you know. Uh, and that's, that's my two cents, by the way. Uh, you don't have to take that. But uh, try to make sure that all your information is correct before you uh, go to apply for a vehicle under your business name. Now, if I had it my way, I will go to a credit union, okay? I, I will be part of a credit union, do business with them, and then I will apply with them, with the credit, uh, a credit union, because it's, it's better, it's just better. They'll give you better rates, and then you can go to a dealership and walk in with that check knowing that you're gonna buy the car off of the dealership and you will only owe the money to your credit union 
uh, better payments, better interest rates, better everything, and then you are creating that business relationship with them. Okay, does that make sense? So that way, uh, if you if I have to choose between uh, nurturing, you know, doing business with a dealership or doing business with a credit union, I will choose the credit union a hundred percent of the time, all the time. <laughs> It's better for you. It's better for your business, and uh, in the long run, really, uh, the credit union is not going to screw you. Uh, oftentimes, the dealerships they will screw you at the first opportunity they have. Remember that they're just trying to get the higher rates and and the higher prices for the cars. But once you're approved uh, by your credit union, you're working with that check. You know what you want. You want. You know what you're looking for, and they're gonna give it to you. So, okay, that's it. <laughs> that concludes the video. Now, if you have any questions, guys, I am going to try, I am going, I'm, I'm telling you, I promise, I'm gonna try to post uh, a video at least three times a week because I have to get into it again and, and, and have the algorithm to pick up the channel again. We've been, again, we, we've been off for a little bit, but we're getting back to it, so. I appreciate you you guys being here. Um, also, oh, I, I almost forget. Also, go ahead and click on the link in the description. I'm gonna link a book, my second book. This is a second book that I put out. Uh, this book, whether you have already started building business credit or you're starting to build business credit, this book is really good for you. This is our second book. Um, I'm going to post a link down below in the description, pick up that book, and I guarantee you're going to like it. Uh, make sure that you leave me a comment down below about the book if you read it, and let us know what you think about it. Thank you so much, guys, and I see you soon. Peace. I'll see you.